So I'm going to show you how to set up a dihybrid cross using a Punnett square. Let's use the example of a dog with black fur and a smooth coat. These are two different genetic traits. And let's say that the black fur trait is the dominant trait and the smooth coat, the other gene involved, is a recessive trait. Now let's imagine we are crossing this dog with a dog that has a, a white fur and that coat is rough in texture, a rough coat. And let's say that white fur is the recessive trait, whereas uh, rough, in this case, is the dominant trait. Now, the easiest way to do this is to assign genotypes to these two individuals. And, and this is our parent generation, of course, that we're going to be crossing. So if we know that black fur is dominant and we choose this dog to be homozygous dominant, we are going to use two capital Bs. If we then go to the second trait, which is the texture of the coat, and it is smooth, it's recessive, we can use... Uh, and a different letter, say C, little c, little c for that recessive trait. We use two lowercase letters. So if we cross that with a dog that has white fur, which is the recessive trait, it has to be the homozygous recessive genotype. And for rough coat, let's say uh, this is the dominant trait, but let's make this interesting and say that this dog is heterozygous. Heterozygous for coat texture. So we can put that as a big C, little c. The easiest way to set up the gametes uh, to show uh, it, what goes into that big Punnett square is to use the following little trick. You start with this big B and you cross it with this little c and that is your first gamete. Then you take that same big B and you cross it with the second of that a genotype pair there and you have another big C little c. Let me take another color show you then you take the second big B you cross it combine it with that little c and then you take this big B and that little c. So you'll see in this case they're all going to be the same all the gametes are going to be the same. So let's do the same on the other side let's start with this little B and that big C and we take that little b with the little c. And then we use the red and we show the little b with a big c and the little b with a little c. So if we go ahead now and put that in our punnet, you can draw a big block with 16 squares inside. And now we're going to put these gametes here at the top. So over here we put big B, little c, big B, little c, big B, little c, and over there as well. And on this side, we're going to put these gametes. We're going to put little b, big c, little b, little c, little b, big c, and little b, little c. So this is the easy part that follows where we combine these gametes with one another. We put the same letters together, the b's and the C's. And we keep going until we have completed the whole Punnett square, all 16 squares, because they are not necessarily all going to be the same. So let's keep going and do this row. And then the last row. So if you look here at what we have in this F1 generation, which is indicated in the Punnett square, you'll see that we have four individuals up here, four dogs that have black fur, because that's the dominant trait. And they have 
not a smooth coat, but a rough coat, and they are heterozygous. So black fur with a rough coat. If you look here at the second row over here, you'll see this is different. These have black fur with a smooth coat. These over here are the same as the first row up there, black fur with a, with a rough coat. And then these down here, the same as the second row, black fur with a smooth coat. So we have shown what we can have, the phenotypes we can have in the F1 generation. But we can go one step further. We can now say, uh, let's do a F1 cross. Let's take two of these individuals. We only have two different kinds here. So let's take one black fur rough coat and we cross it with a black fur smooth coat in the F2 generation. So that's where we're moving next. We're going to take black fur rough coat and it's heterozygous and we're going to cross that with black fur smooth coat heterozygous for black fur but it is uh, recessive for the coat texture and we do that same trick we did up there for the parent cross to get our gametes you use this trick different color just to make that stand out for you red and the last one over there and again we put this into a big Punnett square so you draw a big block with 16 squares inside we put those gametes at the top so let's start that is our first set of gametes we had over there and then we take those and we put them on this side and just like we did for the first planet, we combine everything together. And now you'll see that the F2 offspring is going to look different than the uh, F1 offspring. So keep going until you have your whole planet completed. Must be big. there's the last one so in the f2 generation now you have a different scenario you have in uh, over here you have black coat and those also have the heterozygous uh, dominant trait for texture so it's black rough and then this would be black smooth because it is the homozygous trait for texture and then again here you have black rough and then you have black smooth. So that's how we interpret the phenotype in the F2 generation. We count how many of those we see. And of course here you're going to have more black fur with a rough coat. There's more black with a smooth coat. And then here, interestingly enough, we see something else happening. Here we see white coat, little b, little b, homozygous recessive, and it has a rough coat. So for these, we have white with a rough coat, and over here we have white with a smooth coat. So if I asked you how many dogs in the F2 generation were white with a smooth coat, you would just say 2 out of 16. Or if I asked you how many dogs uh, were white with a rough coat, your answer would also be 2 out of 16. So you're going to count the ones that we're referring to, and uh, express that as a fraction.